Okay, we are back. We're and this is part three. I work with Sean Fourteen, longtime resident, and I would have to call him a a citizen watchdog because he sits and he watches and he observes and he gives a very very honest opinion, and that's what we want to hear because this election cycle is very pivotal. So we're going to go into the Ladonna Jimson uh, situation, and we'll get his honest opinion and see what he thinks. So in regards to LaDonna Jimson, Mm -hmm. now we've already talked about Victoria Baca. Now we have LaDonna Jimson, Mm -hmm. former bank robber. Mm -hmm. She did it 32 years ago. To a lot of people, it does not matter. But to some people, it does matter. So if that revelation was known during the recall election, I do believe I would have been the council person sitting on that seat by default. And, uh, you know. It's either here nor there, and I've worked with her, and I've done a lot of things in the two years because she had no ideas. That's a fact. I'm going to stick by that. Some people may disagree with me, but that's my opinion. So in this district, we have to hold this district. Yeah. Now, Ito's going to throw a bunch of people in here, and what is going to happen? You have LaDonna Jimson, and you have Victoria Baca. You're in District 2. You, ha- you don't really have a dog in the fight, but what's your opinion? Um... I think, well, I think what's done is done in the last election. We can't change that. Um, exactly. And short of another candidate stepping up, um, have to, it's basically going to come down to which one is... is Worse and worser. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got <laughs> Jensen, um, who uh, committed a felony 30 years ago, versus... Um, Victoria Baca, who's involved in stuff right now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, not only that, but ba- Victoria Baca has a track record of only um, caring right. about the Hispanic population. Right, Hispanic right. population. She's part of a, a racist organization and doing and working for Highland Fairview, which would, to me, be a conflict of interest. Yeah. Um, and, well, if Jemson's not taking Highland Fairview money and not not known to be involved in anything, then if, what she, if her bad behavior is done with. I mean, I think she's a better candidate. Um, I think there's a lot of things that need to be done in Edgemont, especially with the water, water system. Mm-hmm. Um, which it, which Jimson has totally said, I'm not doing anything about it, blah, 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 and good luck to you. Yeah, well, if, the, if, it, if there's a natural disaster or anything happens, the, the water system's gone, there's going to be a humanitarian crisis here. Right, right. Um, so, uh, it basically come down to what uh, do you trust uh, Baca more, or do you trust Jemson? Okay. Or do you think you can get Jemson to uh, do more? Uh, right. Well, I, I've been her? yeah, I've been pushing her for two years to do what she needs to do because she didn't have a clue. Everything's a photo op with her. Basically, we we've got Victoria Baca 2.0 in my opinion, being in this district. Now, if you're asking me, because people have been saying, "Don, am I going to run?" and that's the question. If I run, they're like, oh, you'll be a walk in to get that seat. Let, let me give you this scenario. If there was a third candidate that came and is ethical, experienced, and is new, you know, because what I think we need in, in all the districts is new ideas and new people. We're dealing with the same people, and, you, and, and you've heard my show before. I talk about 360 degrees of association. Mm-hmm. You're fairly younger than me. Um, you know, it, you have great ideas. I mean, we need to bring these younger people into the, the realm to lead us in the 21st century. Miss mm-hmm. Jimson's the equivalent of my parents' age. Mm-hmm. I'm almost 50 years old myself, and I was considered a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, I could run in this election, and I'm probably going to um, look into it very seriously, mm-hmm. but I have a candidate. I think that would be acceptable to us because I think we need to move on away from these people and get new people there. But if we could get, you know, and I'm just a firm believer in that. I, you know, if, if I was into myself, mm-hmm. I would jump on that in a heartbeat, but I'm not into the photo ops. I'm, you know, I'm in for the people. I, I'm not here to, for the enrichment of myself. So I, I think we need all new people all around that is not connected because all these people know each other. Victoria Baca and Jimson, they started together. They were in the same Democratic club. I mean, you, you, know, you can go through the connections all day long. So let me ask you this. If there was a third candidate that, that arose, that's experienced, that uh, doesn't seem to be connected. Yeah. Would you, between those three, and this is just your opinion, you don't have a dog in the fight, yeah. but w- w- what would you do? I would look at him very closely. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, honestly, yeah, I'd, 
my personal experience, my personal opinion would be I would kind of hope they'd be con- uh, conservative, but realistically, I don't see yeah, This person happen. is conservative. Oh, they are? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this person is conservative. Well, I think that would be cool. Um, I, well, I seriously think that any third-party candidate that doesn't have, a, have baggage is worth taking a very serious look at. Right, right. And, you know, and the good thing about this third-party third, third party candidate is he ran in 2010. And a uh, former Marine, mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's going to do it or not. I'm just saying at this juncture, we need something different. Yeah. We've had uh, Bill Beatty disaster for 15 years. We had Baca disaster, recall, disgrace. Now we have Jimson. I'm not going to say anything bad about her, but I have a problem with the revelation of. And then, I, of course, it's yeah. personal Honestly, for me. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that the recalls in 1986 um, were a good idea, but. Uh, right. I, but I also admit I don't have all the information mm-hmm. on that to make any type of authoritative, authoritative statement on that. Right. But um, like someone said uh, at the at the city council meeting for the, during the World Legacy mm-hmm. Center de- debate, debate. Mm-hmm. Um, they said that the city has never uh, stuck with the general plan from the time it started. That's well, yeah, that's true, but it's not true because in I think about ten or fifteen years ago, a bunch of citizens got together and they like formalized a general plan that was acceptable to everybody. But um, ten or fifteen years ago was too little, too late. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you. Well, you got to also remember uh, back then. Also, everything was catered toward the base and where the military families were. So that's why you have the, the way the city's all screwed up, the way it's built. Mm-hmm. This area starts up great, then it dies off, and you know things like that. So you got to take in the military uh, families at that time was a big reason, and we had all that extra money, so we didn't have to worry about it. So, um, but uh, so if we had that candidate, I mean, me, I, like I said, I, I just want to see new people. Because the people that we have in this connection, I mean, we can't tell, in my opinion, we can't tell the good guys from the bad guys, mm-hmm. the way things are going. I mean, in Jimson, I don't care how nice she is, we're in representative government, we're the bosses. We've asked that lady for two years to stop the killing in that animal shelter, and she has not done it yet. Mm-hmm. We've asked her to help solve that water problem, she has not done it yet. Mm-hmm. She keeps putting it on us. So, you know, and, and I'm not going to get off my soapbox on that, but all in all, as a citizen, what would you like to see come to Moreno Valley to help stimulate the economy? We got the tilt to kilt. That's pretty, that's pretty good. But uh, for UFC fights, you want to see the UFC fight. But what would you like to see, in, in your opinion? Um, I would like to see the small businesses come back, come back. to the shopping centers. Mm-hmm. I think um, that would do more than like your Aldi or right. your Amazon. Um, it sh- certainly provide a lot more stable jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and, and speak of jobs, what kind of jobs should, should, should we be having here? I mean, you know, we got all these warehousing, and, we, and the warehouses can't even keep workers. Mm-hmm. So, what kind of jobs? Because you know, Moreno Valley never really had. We were always a sleeper community. Everybody commuted from uh, McDonnell Douglas and all these big companies in LA. What kind of jobs should we have here at, at this juncture? And you grew up here, so you, you know you, you should have an idea of. Um, well, I think the easiest thing to do would be uh, uh, support recreation because we've got room for recreational activities, and right. that would be the quickest uh, place to start. Would be uh, businesses to, to use the land around us and create businesses to, to support the. Like, 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 like the Sixty Sixers bring like a small minor league team out here, maybe build a stadium. Not a Markham Stadium guy, but I know you keep trying to do that. Yeah, that no, Markham, you know, if you no, can't buy, yeah. That, that stadium needs to be at Canyon. I mean, right. Canyon, did, yeah. it's tax money for the tax right. funded school, and Canyon would use that on a daily basis. Right, exactly. exactly. And, and that's the only, uh, that didn't make any sense, that's the only high school in Reno Valley that doesn't have a stadium t- for itself, so. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't make sense. But, you know, Guy is going to keep trying. I know that. But well, if we had, a, you know, if we had like an international raceway. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, we had one. It was right down the street over there. And, uh, you know, yeah. nice going, mall, guys. Can't keep shops in. Can't keep shops in. I mean, you go to any other place, a lot of malls are, are thriving, but ours isn't. Um, we got a lot of 99 cent stores. Yeah, and some of those can't even stay in business anymore. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, Sports Authority. Every time we get a business that comes in, we lose a business, it seems to me. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Um, my, my personal opinion is we've got people on the council. We've got to stop, number one, electing our friends to uh, council. We need to get people that understand mm-hmm. 
um, how government works. Mm -hmm. Now, you got three teachers up there, or two teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a disaster. If you're a teacher, you need to be on the school board, in my opinion. Um, you got a lady that, that's a PTA and a former bank robber that's now overlooking public funds. I mean, you know, we can go on and on and on. It would be nice to see someone from law enforcement. It would be nice to see someone from the military. A, nice a business. From the medical field. It'd right. Be nice to see from a, business from, area. Yeah, a reputable and successful business. Business, right, <laughs> right, exactly. Um, in, uh, there, there's so much that we, that we can get into. Like I said, I love the animals. I love the city. Mm -hmm. I love what's going on. Now, let's talk about the crime in the city. The crime isn't just in Edgemont anymore. It seems like the crime is on the east side of the city a lot, a lot of carjackings, a lot of things like that. Uh, Chief Altaveras has been doing a miracle with the police budget. Mm -hmm. What can we do to reduce the crime in this city? Um, for one thing, uh, get some of that money that the city's tied up for the World Logistics Center back into the police department. Um, do you think we should have our own police department or do you think we should... No, there's no way I would trust the city council to, to, in, to be in charge of the rule. Thank of you, law. thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's very good. I, we're, we're on the same page there. Um, I think, um, well, I think addressing uh, substance abuse, I mean, so much of the property crime is well, driven by drug use. I mean, right. You get, get rid of drug use, get people. Not stealing, right? Get people well and to, to, to feed their fix, and he, they even pass a drug test to get a job if we had the jobs. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so we, so, um, so, so, so the biggest thing is we need to bring jobs, the right kind of jobs. And we also need um, more community people. I mean, like I'm involved in my church, and right. Uh, but we need more people and more local churches to step up and offer, like your AA, your NA, your mm -hmm. codependency groups. Uh, okay. Uh, mental health support groups um, because honestly um, depression and bipolar and mm -hmm. substance abuse are often hand in hand hand in hand right substance right. abuse often ma masks other mental health issues too and okay okay so I mean there's things we can do that don't necessarily can, that aren't necessarily quantifiable in terms of economics that could be done to um, improve quality of life and that I mean you go to the city council meeting and talk about quality of life everything always seems to center around um, jobs and uh, law enforcement but those aren't necessarily the answers to everything. every every answer um, and since we're talking about that quality of life we see trucks going up and down all kinds of streets and things like that now we have a logistics industry here it's all over the Inland Empire right now the trucks are parking uh, by the old uh, Walmart over here off Day Street we don't have an infrastructure for these truck, you know, I'm not against truckers. I mean, my neighbor's a trucker, things like that. That's a truck driver. Right. You know, but it doesn't make sense that we, there are no truck stops here in Myrtle Valley. We have no truck services, you know, they can repair their trucks, get new tires, things that they need. When I went back east, I saw all this infrastructure mm -hmm. for trucks. But I also saw there was no truck stops on a state highway. There was truck stops by the interstate. Mm -hmm. So again, the WLC is in the wrong area. It's supposed to be over here. Yeah, there's the way you, you can... The, the 60 freeway is never designed to stuff trucks down like that. Um, certainly wasn't designed to get trucks here from the 10 freeway. Right, <laughs> right. Um, I mean, that's just one more thing. Edo could... In Highland Fairview could build this warehouse, but then it, they're going to... He's He'd be jamming the... the, the the freeway's full of trucks, and then it would be the taxpayer's problem to widen Right, the because he doesn't have to do anything about it because they're not his trucks. So it's, he's basically putting the horse before the cart. And yeah, and it's not exactly like um, the Teamsters are getting any more numerous right. anymore. I mean, it's mostly going to NAFTA drivers that are poorly skilled, poorly right. educated, and don't maintain their trucks. And usually when there's some sort of practically physics-defying accident in right. you mentioned in the press enterprise, it's usually one of those NAFTA drivers that, I mean, it's baffling how some of them even did these <laughs> I mean, My dad's been a truck driver for like 35 years, and uh, he can't figure it out. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, we're, you know, and we're going to, when we come back from break, we're going to talk about the, the infrastructure for the truck since you have a good insight on that. I knew you were the right person to get on this show. I'm glad I'm, I'm just so right. And we're going to talk about that in two plus two.